name's Danny Crowe. I'm the Technical Director for Enfocus. Um, Enfocus are a gold ALM partner, and what that means is that we help organisations who want to implement the quality tools within Visual Studio, and we help them via a number of different mechanisms. I've put some up there on the, the screen, uh, VTSP and, and the quality tools, uh, deployment planning service, and I know there's a lot of acronyms. But what I wanted to do today, right now, is spend a bit of time talking about what's new and what's coming in Visual Studio 2011. So I've split this down into three sections, but we, we are actually going to do um, shorter videos um, to cover each of these topics in more detail. So the first thing we're going to look at is Visual Studio 2011 itself and what's happened in the UI there, specifically the uh, reduced toolbar command placement, and we'll, we'll see, what, see what that is in a minute, and the monochromatic color, color scheme as well. We'll move on to test manage and we'll look at some of the fixes and changes that have been deployed in that, and also exploratory testing. And finally, we'll move on to Team Foundation Server and what some of the interesting things are that are coming around task boards and also the feedback tool. So without further ado, we'll, we'll cut to some, some screenshots and those screenshots, first of all, start off with the Visual Studio UI. And here, what we see is this monochromatic display. But we also see, if we look in, that, that, that actually some of the icons are missing from the, the, the toolbar. Cut, copy, and paste, for example, you know, they're reduced out of there, so, so the noise is minimized. Also, what we see is this, this either dark or light monochromatic theme that we can, that we can have with Visual Studio. And, and again, it's, it's, it's mostly around preference for, for that. But coming on to Microsoft Test Manager, what we can actually see is that there's been a series of fixes. And specifically here, we're looking at the multi-line support and the multi-line support for test steps within, within a test case. And as we can see, that's all been implemented here and, uh, and allows a user to, to put line feeds within, to a, within a, a test step. Also what we've noticed is that, is that some of the caching issues that we saw before and moving between suites have been fixed. And again, that would be specifically shown by the, 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 progress, the progress bar effectively in the top right hand corner. And so we'll move on to exploratory testing. And here we can see we've got a specific window that's designed exactly for exploratory testing and exploratory testing sessions. So what we can do here is see all of the product backlog items, user stories, whatever they may be, and actually create an exploratory testing session around that. As we move into an exploratory testing session, you can see that we can actually uh, document our session and, uh, and take screenshots along the, the journey through the application. But also, as I've identified here, you can actually see that you can mark up using Paint or another editing tool, you can mark up the screenshots that you take to highlight specific areas if that's what you need. And of course, from here also, you can raise bugs. And, and when you raise those bugs, you can actually see all of the steps that have been performed. And so once the, our exploratory testing sessions have uh, been executed, then we can actually see the progress of them here as well. So moving on to um, Team Foundation Server, and, and what we actually see in here is, is, is one of the windows, which is the task board for a particular sprint. And, and what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the fact that, that this isn't just a snapshot of what's going on, this is, this is live information, and these particular um, stickies, if you like, can be moved from one section to the other. So for example, here we're moving an item from in progress to done, and as we, as we move it to done, that means that the work remaining on that particular work item would be zeroed. So it really is a very interactive um, uh, uh, part of the application. And so lastly, I'd like to move on to the feedback tool. And here we see a feedback session in progress with the feedback tool docked to the left hand side. The more observant of you will notice that it's actually very similar to the test runner. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the things that you can now do with the test runner, you can actually do with the feedback tool here as well. So taking screenshots and so on and so forth. But what we think this is really important for is user acceptance testing. 
Now, the process here is the fact that you would, you know, somebody on the project, maybe the, um, the, the project manager, but, but from our perspective, we would like to see testers setting up um, user acceptance feedback sessions. And in these, we would instruct the user what they're actually looking for. At that point, the user would the the user would actually get an email, and in that email, if they didn't already have the client feedback tool installed, would send them to a link to get that installed. Once they've got that, they then get all of the instructions in, in terms of what they or how they need to go about reviewing the application. And while they're doing that, they can provide a lot of rich information in terms of screenshots, some um, commentary in terms of dialogue but also they can rate that, um, that particular session or that particular feature of the application. And so we think that the feedback tool has got you know, great potential as, as a support and aid to user acceptance testing. So I think that's about all we're gonna cover for right now. But as I said, we're actually gonna produce another series of, of videos that's gonna go into each of those topics in a bit more detail. I hope you found it very useful and if you need to get in touch with us then all of our, our contact information is provided in this screen. Thank you very much.